Um, hello, um, this is Max and Matt, and we are starting our broadcast. Today is uh, Wednesday, July 6, 2016. And I have with me Matt from Latvia, and his YouTube channel is Matt and Enrico Channeling. And uh, hi, Matt, welcome to the, to the show. Yeah, hi, nice to see you. <laughs> Sure. Thank you. So, what time is it now? Um, it's 10 p.m. here, yeah. or a bit over 10 p.m. Right, and um, and it's live because Latvia is uh, close to the polar circle, right? So, so have white night there. Well, maybe after an hour it will be dark, so uh -huh. maybe turn on the light or go to the other room. All right. And I'm uh, in San Diego, California. I think it's about the, the other side of the of the uh, northern hemisphere. All right. So, um, what are your what are your experiences? What are the can you give us some highlights of your experiences with extraterrestrials and spirits? Do you mean the experience about the Pleiades or all all, all over the channel? just uh, all over all um, just the high, highest brightest have you been ever to their ships oh no 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 i'm not in a physical <laughs> contact i have seen uh strange lights and so on but uh, i have always wished to like have a, or see a, a physical appearance of them uh, we have channeled many information about several types of ets uh, but actually never had a physical contact, so basically all the information I'm sharing is just uh, channeling information uh, through sometimes intense channeling and sometimes like uh, um, sensual or telepathical thought form channeling. And uh -huh. so the experiences are many varieties of experiences, but uh, it's a mixture of all. Thank you. Yeah, we call it um, conscious channeling, channeling and trance channeling. Trance channeling is when you get into the trance state. And conscious channeling is more like a psychic work. You stay in your body and deliver the messages, right? Oh, well, yeah, it's, uh, it's a variety of ways of receiving channeling. Here in Latvia, we, we I know maybe 12 to 15 channelers, and uh, some of them are really... Uh, amazing and uh, some of them are uh, telepathic channelers and uh, so about ET topics I can share is, uh, is uh, like wide range of information but uh, I, I mostly speak about my own experiences own experiences so uh, uh, so yeah that's the that's the story can you tell a little more about uh the channeling community in Latvia, how does it work? Is it online or do you meet physically, locally? Uh, well, basically, they are my friends. Uh, when, like, uh, in, in my case, it started like 10 years ago when uh, I started doing like deep meditations. And after some years of meditational practices, accidentally I started to do, or the channeling happened to me. Uh, basically was guided uh, past life research, my past life research, and then all of a sudden channeling happened, and then I started to study what the channeling is, or just basically received many information from the channeling, and then maybe two or three years later from that point, I started teaching others to do channeling, and uh, started to do even uh, channeling seminars here in Latvia, so it's basically three years from now, uh, three years ago from now, and, uh, and so yeah, and that's how the channelers developed uh, here in Latvia. Uh, it doesn't mean that there are many other channelers, but uh, it's basically, uh, basically like students or my friends that also learned to do channeling here. <coughs> mm -hmm. Wonderful. Um, my Skype froze. What do I do with that? Not not the Skype, the Hangouts. Um, Hold on, I will restart the, the program. I think it should be fine. No, well, but I hear you nicely. Mm 
Lên đã. Lên đã. Tu vai na arcos, tava de sopa mal na arcos, porque a gente ficou com pausa de minuto para as skypes. Não, não vai dar, tira o tal. I think I'm good. Oh, you seem good. All right, all right. I restarted the 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 Firefox. All right, thank you. So, um, how how is there? How are you? How popular are your webinars, and how well are they accepted? Um, is it? Spooking people, scaring people. Uh, well, I, I don't know. Maybe here at the beginning I was skeptical to it myself. Mm -hmm. uh, but then I have uh, well, you know, you enter the trans channeling state or how you call conscious uh, channeling state and you receive many, many images, many pictures, many sensations, and it gets like, uh, well, well, what's going on with me and something. I was maybe skeptical to myself. And uh, then I received many like uh, matching information that you can actually dug into or or, or see uh, that it matches like something you have never known to like in real life, like you search on Google or something. And uh, then I started to do the public channelings, and there basically the the people who came to channeling they are basically like, uh, oh, I want to know. How can I earn money? Well, not basically, but at the beginning. How can I earn money? Can you help me in my difficulties? And so on and so on. But the uh, the being which came to me uh, at the beginning was like uh, the Enrico. And he was like constantly in highest excitement. And he was like not even paying attention to those questions. He, he was just constantly talking about why do you have this question and why what you want to achieve something like money or win a lottery or something that they didn't pay attention to like giving the exact exact or replying to human ego or as they see it like human inner energies that's being received and perceived in many ways like human energy blockages or something and they always wanted to explain uh explain the situation uh, in from a spiritual perspective not from uh, you ask a question, we give you a detailed answer to all your questions. Because as they say, as the Enrico said, well, if you we are if we answer to one of your questions that uh, that you ask from your mind, like from the ego, you would say, you will have hundred other questions and that will be arising from the ego. But as they many times said, the Enrico is like the idea is that you find your true self, and this was the purpose of the channeling. So at the beginning it, it was getting difficult because many people thought, "Oh, here's a being from other dimension, or help me win a lottery, uh, give me the technology, or something like this." Uh, but it, it, at the beginning it was more like a spiritual understanding. So at the beginning there were many people, and then they like uh, dumped off, uh, or mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. real people that real spir uh, spiritual questions that they come, they started to come. And then uh, the channeling or the information got and got more intense. But it was like many times, uh, uh, every channeling is completely different. It's ne it's never the same. It's like it depends on the people who are come. And it depends on the energy in the room. And it, it also depends on the on the uh, in the questions that the people have. So it's basically one of the years that is basically studying and learning the overall the process of the channeling. And uh, but for example, when we are alone, like for example, me, my girlfriend, or my other friends, like three and four people in the room, uh, and no camera turned on, uh, you can get a really uh, dense information. When there is a camera, they accept that this channel is a public channel, so basically, uh, we'll share limited information. To you. So it's basically, uh, at the beginning, it was like this. Uh, not until the last message that I recorded, well, basically what I believe you got interested in. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Um, so Enrique, he's. Um, uh, can you tell me about him? What 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 is uh, his essence? Uh, uh, there is many information that I received and I received and still receive from that. Mm -hmm. uh, so basically, uh, I can, in one sense, say what they have said, or in one sense, 
say that I have learned from this. So basically, I think the better way is to describe my understanding from that point. Okay. Is that okay. uh, at the beginning I didn't understand the concepts. So it basically was like information that I not understood. So basically, I want to understand it in my mind myself. But as I now understand, there is a soul group, or there is a uh, many many souls uh, share like soul brothers, like uh, share the same uh, soul. And uh, in this group, it's like well, basically you would say soul aspects. So basically, he is one of my soul aspects. That he said I'm his previous incarnation. Meaning that uh, mm -hmm. uh, we should, uh, he's like my previous incarnation, but the thing is that he lives in a completely different world, uh, dimension or density, but they can have mm -hmm. this two time uh, communication. And they live mm -hmm. in a world where basically many people who have wanted to channel him also start to incredibly laugh, sometimes just fall on the ground, uh, on the ground and start laughing. So basically, what I want to say is his energy basically reaction to uh, to humans uh, mainly is incredible laughter. And it's like they, they receive this laughing energy, excitement energy, and uh, many times in the channeling they say, this is so interesting and exciting. Uh, so basically their energy consists of a little bit white, uh, gold and yellow, and their world has the non-physical world. They have this... Uh, you can see their like how do they look, um, but uh, in a sense, uh, what I have seen that you can actually walk through each other, or uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's like basically like water, shining light water, uh, shining yellow golden water um, that creates a form that looks like a really human, uh, slightly mm -hmm. different from human, bigger heads, smaller jaws, uh, no hair, uh, golden clothing, and. Uh, and they come from uh, I ask them how can you call your world uh, in in my world in my language that you can use he said world of sun world of what world of sun world of sunlight sun. uh -huh. okay. and the the interesting thing about their world is that uh, they don't have like a plane on which they walk like we have earth uh, they have a uh, all around the golden yellow energy and the energy changes form of what they think so basically uh if you imagine a table uh, all of a sudden you see in front of yourself a table or a chair and when i understood they don't even walk that much through their reality they just change the energy and all of a sudden you see you match the energy with the, like a, you want to meet a friend you just imagine him and your reality somehow start to merge together and you all of a sudden see his friend. But if the friend doesn't want to talk to you, you will receive telepathical information that no, this is not time to want to talk to you. And that they are in linked and communicate or talk with many other worlds. And they have this as I understood the golden dust energy, which basically is a sparking energy, uh, which can help really strongly into uh, communicating with other worlds. Uh, and to describe his character, he basically doesn't care about anything. He's always finding excitement. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is so interesting. This is so interesting and exciting. <laughs> so he wants to talk about topics that are exciting for him, not boring. And if people are asking boring questions, well, there has been times when he just goes away and he's like, oh, it's too boring. We're going to go away. <laughs> we cannot stay there. So. Uh, and there have been times that such high laughter energy comes through or excitement energy comes through that uh, people in the audience just everybody is laughing their ears out. Uh, so it's uh, the channeling is different uh, all the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can show what uh, I can you move the co computer a little far so we can see the whole um, all of you, or just leave them. Uh, the thing is that my computer it's a tablet, so it, it doesn't stay. Oh, okay. Like a laptop, you can close it easily. So it's basically almost perfect. All right. Now it's good. Yeah. Uh, is he related? Okay. Thank you. 
Yeah. Is it related? Uh, is you and Rika re related to Bashar's people, Sasani, Chakani? Uh, I have asked that question many times. Yeah. I have asked that question many times. Yeah. Uh, no, there's an order for me to go to the other room. I have asked that question to him many times. Uh, they said that uh, the Sani, they say the Sani civilization is not a part of them. Uh, they're like civilization, but they have a close relationship to those civilization. Uh, but I have I have seen the uh, what people say Bashar once in channeling and i have seen uh, a lady here in latvia that's not yet channeling but she has the the, the soul or aspect also from his, from that world basically what i have seen or understood is that uh, the yellow golden energy worlds uh, basically uh, share the same information uh, but there are uh, different characteristics or, um, or different characteristics uh, different uh, from the world of Enrico or, or the world of the Tanis. So yeah, so it's basically they're related but they're not from the same um, density, you would say, or the same plane. Uh are they also related to humans and to the grace as uh, Bashar's people? Uh, you mean the Enrico? Yeah, the uh, sons, uh, world of sons. Well, they're they're like uh, what I what I what I feel uh, through the channeling is that uh, the Enrico civilization they skip all the physical uh, uh, actions. They don't uh, go into uh, physical conflicts. They don't go into physical. Uh, physical procedures to like do something here they just observe and say that uh, uh, it's not for them to like uh, have an intention to do anything they said that lower frequency beings who have more ego and more mind always have the intention to do something to go for something to achieve something uh, to fight for something also uh, and they don't have the intention to even uh, join one or the other side as to uh -huh has to do the and how to do the communication as like uh, they find something interesting in this uh, they don't put their finger into it uh, but they can help and share the information uh, or to do communication and many times when we channel different beings I try to channel different beings I always ask Enrico he comes and I ask him to like give me another being or help me find another being and he just uh, gives me another being communicating with the, the other being which we were choosing. Uh -huh. So Enrique is your past uh, life or the future life? Who is Who comes first? Uh, you know, it's, I will go to the other room. Well, it's this in oh, sure. no what is time and uh, uh, wait. As he said it's experience. So he is my past experience. Past experience, all right. Yeah, so it's not for the sake of time, it's mm -hmm. an sake of experience. Sure. It reminds me of Bashar's uh, concept as well. He says that past life idea is an illusion, but experience is real. And Bashar, Bashar well, says. Yeah, uh, I have uh, seen uh, or some other channelers, but I love to clean my head clean, clean keep my head right. clean. Um, from other information because sometimes if you know too much in the channeling it gets uh, and the mind pops in and like disorders the information you receive by uh, uh, also Bashar's world I think it was called uh, Sasani is the people and S Sasani is the place of shining light or something like that so the world of Sun and uh, of Enrique and the World of Shining Light, I think it's it's very similar uh, names with the worlds. Well, so there is, I, 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 I don't know. There is an, an overlap there too. Um, yeah, so I'm listening. Are you good now? Yeah, I'm good. 
So what more questions do you have? Um, yeah, what do you want to talk about before before we go to the Pleiadian message? Is there any other ex are there any other experiences which you want to share? Um, well, I have lots of experiences, and uh, uh, the, the the biggest uh, difference is well, the biggest thing I want to share is also that maybe half a year ago or a couple months ago. Uh, I realized that uh, my mind is not capable of memorying anymore uh, uh -huh. new ideas. So basically, uh, there were, just like a couple months ago, there was like another and another channeling session. Uh -huh. uh, people came, they listen, and I want to memorize the thing that was said. Uh, the more I tried to memorize, the more my head started to hurt. And that's when I realized that there is no more possibility for me to remember anything and just maybe maybe I should just, you know, uh, the, there's like the information that's being channeled and the information that I have, like my understanding of how stuff works. And I always love to take the information from the channeling and somehow mix it together. My understanding so I can share my perspective of it. And then I understood that there is no more capacity for me to like rem remember all the channeling messages to like mix them together. Uh, in, the, in my understanding, just what I said, just uh, channel whatever you channel uh, and keep on my own mind. Yeah, my uh, friend uh, who is uh, also into this uh, spiritual work very seriously, like professionally seriously studying and uh, getting initiation. She says that, you know, she can't remember much because it's the price she pays for being in the uh, higher dimension. Well, this, I, I, yeah, yeah. So basically what I want to say is that uh, I record, I write it down on the camera, put it on YouTube and then like, okay, head clean, don't think about it and focus on the steps, the steps that I do, uh, that I do. So basically, uh, if you, if there is uh, information you uh, from the what experiences I had, so basically you need to get down to a point uh, of what kind of experiences are you interested. In? <laughs> um, you know the biggest proofs of the spirit, the biggest miracles. Yeah. Biggest miracles. God, uh, In, in about the biggest miracles is it? I don't know I, I don't know about the biggest miracles I would say the things that really inspired me the things that really like uh, helped me or I felt a huge resonance with is the beings from the I call it the angels no but the place we call it in Latvia the ACB which means that you are existing uh, it's what it's like place of absolute presence or beingness it's basically being with bright white energy and like, like love and all the time when you get into contact or even closer to them you get this huge loving experience uh, it's like that truly like fills you fulfills you and uh, uh, these experiences are always blissful uh, amazing experiences physically uh well i had many of them like et contact like not et contact experiences like lucid dreams uh with so many ufo ships uh like sometimes astral astral out of body experiences that uh, even uh, late just a couple of months ago maybe i had another one uh it was like another huge triangle shape, uh, saucer shape, all kinds of shape, ships that were landing. And I was like, ah, I will wake up. I will not have a video recorded of them, uh, no attention to them and just like whatever. And then I woke up, it's like, just don't pay attention to it anymore. But at the previous lucid dreams or other body dreams, I had my camera, I started to film them. I said, well, I'm frightened, scared. Uh, and uh, so I had many experiences like this also really amazing and also had the you know we want to do we want to call down a ET, ET like UFO mm -hmm. and there is no clouds in the sky and all of a sudden 
there are like several clouds in the sky that look like saucer shaped disks <laughs> and we're looking and like oh <laughs> look we wanted to call like ufos and all the clouds are now ufo shapes and then you know what we could do we just laugh and they are like coincidence or something uh, but uh, it depends on which uh, topic you want to like amazing things which topic you to, uh, what kind of type of things yeah um yeah i also don't um i don't grab the camera right away because uh sometimes the experience is just maybe for me and um yeah i, I would not um uh, i would not violate the trust of the spirit or the extraterrestrials if they don't want to be photographed you know, why would they photograph them right yeah. I didn't get as much of uh, UFO sightings, but you know, if 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 I get one, I would first ask them before grabbing the camera. So, I, you know, uh, when uh, no, I yeah. now I I'm kayaking on on uh, on uh, Pacific Ocean, and a few times dolphins came out. I think it was three or four times, and uh, I didn't have an inclination to to grab the camera. I would uh, just. Uh, uh, enjoy their presence and uh and not bother them with photographing them so that's that's oh, my intention yeah, yeah. so do you, do you wish to um to speak about the pleiadian message yeah well uh, let's start by it uh, with it so basically the difference is uh, in this channeling is we have channeled uh, many uh, or several et races different uh, and I understood there are several or many uh, genetical chassis as they said many times that exist in this universe and uh, they are created some to inhabit uh, non-oxygen planets carbonite planets uh, rocky planets uh, uh, gas planets and there are many like genetic Chassis all over the world, and we have channeled also uh, beings that uh, take humans, uh, uh, exper hum take humans for experiments, and so on and so on. Uh, and uh, my, well, but basically, I channel Enrico, and uh, then just uh, like a week ago, maybe maybe a couple of days ago, I don't remember right now, but uh, we did a channeling summer camp. Well, basically, we come together a group of people. There was maybe sixty to eighty people that were there and we like do channeling and then learn to do channeling well i basically give them the lessons how to do channeling and basically and then at one evening we did a special group uh, like uh, you said the channel is dark there like maybe there was like six to eight they get in the channeling state and there are like people uh, aside them that ask questions about the ufo get people like searching for the information about ufos uh, extraterrestrial race as you would say and uh, and also I wanted to try to do this so basically I just sit down with like 10 people in front of me and we were like uh, I, I was going I, I thought there are these uh, human type of uh, expression and I just said okay uh, I will call you Enrico and uh, you people just try to navigate to those human extraterrestrials and uh, then Enrico came and uh, they started asking uh, what are you interested in and uh, the, the people started to say that we uh, are interested in the human races uh, and uh, then what happened was that all of a sudden there was this lady that looked like a blonde and she had a blue coating uh, I don't know, blue, blue clothing and uh, and she instantly came and said her name is Jessica Julie. I, I, I don't actually recall exactly because I, I don't find the uh, need to like give exact names or something uh, because the name of Enrico is like he asked, yeah, you can call me like this. I said, okay. Uh, but the, the name was Jessica. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, but the name was blurred out, so I didn't quite catch up exactly letter to letter, but uh, it was Jessica Julie or something. And uh, and she instantly was pushing a message. And uh, that's like nothing that like Enrico does. Enrico basically asks, what are you interested in? And she was constantly pushing a message out, like pushing it, pushing it. And then I was like, okay, this channel is happening. I was like, 
Uh, okay, and then I said to the audience there is a lady called Jessica and she wants to push this message out. And uh, she is constantly pushing this message, and I will. I just. I, I will just let it let her come through. And uh, the message at the beginning was that uh, uh, we come in peace. We are your brothers and sisters. And uh, I said, okay. Well, whoa, 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 what's going on to myself? And uh, then she just took over the channel, and uh, then the information just started coming, coming, coming in detail. In detail, which I never experienced from Enrico. Enrico was basically like giving overall picture, but she was giving in detail. And she said that they are basically like galactical, human galactical, how you say, alliance or aliens? Alliance. Human alliance, so, yes, alliance. Mm -hmm. alli human galactical alliance, and they were showing me the star systems, and there were the Pleiades, the as I later understood, the Andromeda, it's a different galaxy, as I understood. I, I, I thought it's a planet, not a planet, but it's a, basically a different galaxy system. And they are on a mission. And that's what I, it's different from Enrico, because Enrico doesn't put the intention in anything. Uh, uh -huh. They were like, we are on a mission. We are looking for people to cooperate in this mission. Uh, our mission is to serve three things. Uh, one is, uh, I don't know the the, which was the prior or the first one, but basically these three things were uh, peace. Uh, okay, well the first important thing was that to unite and to help humans, uh, all human kinds, uh, and by unition they mean uh, take them in their ally alliance and uh, they give and support these three things a humankind environment which is basically human inhabitable planets which basically are uh, earth-like planets uh, it's also uh uh yeah overall the, the technology in habitable plan planets to help these planets and the third was also uh, the second was also uh human um, and to keep humans clean, uh, like human genetic clean, and this is what the oh, first wow. time this was the first time I understood that okay, human genetics keep them clean, and they said that there are variety of other genetics being and are willing to be mixed into human uh, to like destroy the human clean genetics, and uh, uh -huh. this is becoming uh, like a danger or a threat to human our. Uh, as we exist here on Earth, uh, like uh, we become, uh, well, not extinct, but manipulated to uh, different uh, other races being. So basically, uh, in a in a way, human becoming extinct. So this is a threat, and they said also the technology and uh, medical stuff. So basically, the three things were uh, inhabitable planet which include also other Earth-like planets, animals, friendly animals, uh, technology to unite and uh, to serve the, the purpose of the um, uh, in bringing the human races together. And mm -hmm. I, I wrote those stuff down on the letter I posted on the YouTube video uh, and I burned the I, I threw the letter out. So if I would have the letter, I would just skip to the point where they, I wrote down all the all this stuff. So, in simple words, to unite, help, and support our uh, brothers and sisters. And what I thought from the brothers and sisters, meaning uh, you can easily understood it as a cult if you present it, or you are our brothers and sisters. Uh, but what they meant is that we share the same genetics, and we are a human race. Therefore, we are brothers and sisters. And uh, they shared also that the brothers and sisters exist in other densities, uh, the higher densities, other physical densities, and there are humanoids. What I understood in English would be easier to say humanoids that are basically human kinds, uh, mm -hmm. but slightly look different. And so basically, they are uniting all them back uh, as a family and uh, help and support each other. And uh, well, I don't remember exactly what the message was given in the channeling state but the letter which i wrote down uh happened the next day because it's like the information was still coming and pushing me 
and I said, okay, I'll go to and pick up a camera, maybe later I will record the, the voice message. But they said, no, write it right down. And I started writing down the letter, and then I read it down and uh, posted on YouTube the video, the message from Pleiades. And they said that they are uh, from Pleiades. Mm -hmm. uh, I always thought there is the Pleiadian star system, but they said the star system is Pleiades, and they are Pleiadians, uh, but they are strongly involving in their mission three races, uh, which was basically the Pleiadians, the Andromeda, and there were another uh, another one, uh, which I didn't quite catch up on. It was like not so active, uh, but the Pleiadians are really loving, actually really loving, and they have this white energy with them and support from the place of the absolute, like the heavens, the angels, but they are not human with wings, they are humans like you and me, only really pure and they have support from their side they have support from andromeda uh andromeda humans uh, which look slightly different than us but they are like the police uh and they are, have this intention to involve and take ac actions into and look for and after crimes so basically okay. the place have the energetical support and the techno technological support and the other matters have the uh, involving and engaging uh, in certain activities. So basically, they are all, overall working together. But as they said, uh, there are three civilizations that work uh, actively into this, intensely into this. There are few down here on Earth that work and cooperate hand to hand, and they are seek they are seeking. Uh, humans in several missions, uh, three tasks. Uh, first is to take humans uh, that are with political power that can make decisions or take actions into political benefits uh, mm -hmm. from the side of their interests is basically our peace and uh, the thing I said. Third uh, is that I understood they are like uh, the ecological and biological sphere which basically means that help the nature on Earth, which I think firstly would be, as they gave them images, to make the desert greener. And the third, uh, the third level of their cooperation is to find people, look for people, channelers, maybe not channelers, unconscious or conscious people with physical and non-physical contact with them, uh, that can share the message of their interest. Which basically, like the message that they said that is the utmost important is that we humans are not alone here in the universe. Uh, there are our brothers and sisters that are really close to us that are willing to help us in all ways possible uh, to, to bring peace, uh, to bring the technology, and, uh, and many, many more. They gave me a detailed uh, information about what's going on here and uh, the tasks uh, and the purpose of why the message has to be spread uh, but as they said and today I also had a, like a little bit telepathical uh, communication that uh, they're also giving this message to people who will not find this beneficial to their ego uh, meaning for example if I give if they come to a person uh, for example um, let's say for example a random um, person and gave him the information normally the person will take this information of his benefits uh, to like maybe make money or to make him feel uh, more important and the information will be misunderstood and they are looking for people that are you'd say willing to dump away the uh, money system in a way or the ego to like serve this mission So yeah, this is the way, this is. I the, like the I like the idea about the first contact. Can you just dis discuss their first contact um, process? Uh, I understood the the first contacts already have been be, have been made, uh, mm -hmm. although maybe not publicly or uh, or like world known like the televisions and something. Uh, but uh, as they said, uh, uh, they said that uh, they take people of importance. For example, they gave me uh, like uh, samples and not samples, but like cases that have been done. Is basically uh, when, for example, somebody that is working with them or cooperating with them, 
uh, they give the message like telepathically, consciously or unconsciously to take like a certain action in political uh, manners like, uh, you know, make a decision to work in a, uh, make a, like a polit political decision in some way. And uh, they say that sometimes people lose their uh, trust or lose their, uh, uh, you know, they are afraid to make this decision because sometimes they don't feel that the information they race receive is like trusted or something. And if the decision is really important, they take the person uh, uh, in ways necessary. Sometimes it can be out of body experience or sometimes it can be a physical experience that they just come and take the person away or the person uh, in order to like and give him the detailed information in person why does he uh, or she needs to make this political decision uh, a little like something in politics there's some danger coming and you need to avoid this danger by making uh, a certain decisions or uh, judgments maybe that need to be made uh, mm -hmm. So basically, this was the physical contact, uh, like uh, what they gave, and they gave also that uh, uh, they make the physical contact also up importance if it's necessary to help these three agendas that they have. And I said the agendas is to uh, make peace or like avoid wars, uh, to make the earth nature uh, greener, or well, basically to prevent the nature from being destroyed. And third is to spread the message. If you're working one or one or other the field, and something is utmost importance, they can make a physical contact with you. Uh, but they look at it as non-ego based contact uh, because some people, uh, which I know, they are looking for. Oh, I want to fly around in the space uh, like uh, ego based ideas. Uh, they don't pay attention to it. They, they are what what I felt from the channeling is that they are like they are on the mission. And it's really uh, like utmost importance to focus on this mission. They're not here to play around. Uh, and this is what I felt, uh, ob uh, or not what I have felt anywhere uh, from any other channeling that I have at any time before. But basically, this is uh, a unique experience for me and really interesting. And about the first contact, what they say is that basically, well, I can share the message in. Uh, I can share the message in uh, a little bit expanded or in detail. Uh, they said that fight is for uh, the activities here on Earth and on our solar system is uh, uh, a little less, but a fight. In the what I understood the similar word would be old war. Basically, is an informational, energetical field uh, who controls this field, and basically. Uh, we humans here on Earth are being manipulated and controlled by many informational, energetical, uh, which in many cases they said is also a cosmic radio and manipulated cosmic mm -hmm. radio. Uh, what I understood mm -hmm. is that basically, for example, Mars, it sometimes creates aggression in, in our world, uh, but if you can manipulate such energies, you can create uh, human emotions in all way necessary. Uh, to go higher, well, basically to lower or guide the human energy, you would say mass consciousness, uh, yes. in, a, in, a, in a different way, meaning that also if this mass consciousness, the, as they said, informational, energetical field is being guided to, uh, or lowered uh, to uh, uh, a particular race that is not harmonious uh, for a human, uh, then the unharmonious race can have more physical contact here on Earth, meaning that they have to start to match. Right, and they, right. they said that it's like uh, the, in the universe there exists this unchangeable law that is the law of free will, and they gave me another mm -hmm. law, uh, which is also strange, but I don't know how to uh, even explain it in, in, uh, in a language. But basically, what I understood, the cosmos itself is conscious, and uh, uh -huh. the cosmos itself has the built-in laws that cannot be changed. And uh, this cosmic consciousness also, the, the second law is that this cosmic consciousness also, if you are not uh, going the path uh, of your life, 
that you're supposed to go but this cosmic consciousness will cause you problems like illnesses sicknesses pains uh, frustrations or all, all sorts that hey you're not doing the task that you are here to do and this is another <laughs> cosmic law that's like helping you to go to your uh, the job that you need to do what you choose to do when you are born uh, choose to come here uh, but anyway uh, back it to the seems like a law of karma uh, it sounds like karma it's like basically uh, keeping you uh, to do the stuff that you came here to do a karma what I do is something a little bit different it's basically and it's be the karma law can be changed but these two laws it cannot be changed karma and what understood is the energy field uh, from them but these two laws they are like uh, unchangeable and it, it no one no one created them and no one can change them but uh, it doesn't mean that uh, um, well, it's like a cosmic consciousness like, uh, like uh, energy that cannot be changed like a way of living uh, mm -hmm. so and uh, they say that the free will law is unchangeable exists everywhere in cosmos and basically the idea is that uh, uh, if we humans do not agree that somebody can come down here for example a, a, a race that can harm us uh, our energy is much higher than them and they cannot even come here uh, to like harm us uh, but they can manipulate and change the information or energetical field uh, to guide or lower the human consciousness energy field in the sense that our energy starts matching their energy and therefore they can get closer and closer and even get to be born as souls here on earth uh, or to have a more closer physical contact here on earth and to like uh, guide the human uh, uh, human collective consciousness to a different way so basically as they said they start involving more rightly into this because they say they see that the crime against humanity that's happening right now it's uh, uh well in, in my words it's basically not nice <laughs> not nice or not uh, not allowed mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Done here. and the reason for this is that uh, they will not allow uh, any more wars they will just not allow mm -hmm. they are keeping uh, their hands off uh, but if it gets critical uh, they will engage in meaning of that they can like have a massive uh, UFOs uh, or a massive invasion <laughs> meaning that uh, they will not uh, let uh, humans be uh, uh, enslaved uh, genetical changes and they will not allow wars uh, because this is not human origin uh, this is not originally from humans if humans uh -huh. decide Cells that they want to torture and kill, uh, like for example, each other. Uh, it could be okay. It's, uh, it's something that evolves from their own civilization and they go to their own evolution uh, this way. Or we, ex mm -hmm. uh, or we choose to like hit somebody or make fun of somebody, it's okay. Uh, but if somebody manipulates the informational energetical fields, human can have all sorts of uncontrolled and not origin emotions and thoughts and. Uh, feelings uh, that cause them to do wars or cause them to do uh, aggressives against each and every and they said that uh, this is a crime against uh, humanity as they said humans on earth and uh, they, they start to get and pay more attention to it uh, somehow i feel the word engaged meaning by start uh, like, uh, like something like war but it's not like war it's like uh, uh, take action to prevent uh, any like crimes and they said that they don't fight with weapons and uh, they don't fight any of this uh, it, it, they just uh, if for example humans understand that we are not alone mm -hmm. to feel the energy from them uh, or understand that humans return to their prime source as they said humans start to understand their prime source and such and understand that they are not alone in the process. And from this understanding the overall human energetical field which exists on the planet Earth uh, will just light up and start shining because humans understand that there is no uh, threat anymore. There is no 
as this type of evil race that enslaves us, but that they didn't say name evil race. And that is, the, the humans will just start to wake up to the prime source, and, they were, and from that point, uh, humans will know that they are not alone, that their brothers and sisters are with us, and through this, the informational energetic field will start getting more closer to their energetical field, and therefore the uh, the physical contact can happen uh, because the humans by themselves and by their heart will wish to unite back to their uh, family as they say the, the, the brothers and sisters uh, and uh, something like this I, I, I maybe if I think how to say it more nicely I will find the words uh, I'm just putting the pieces back together to say <laughs> right um, the, another idea you mentioned was that uh, their first contact will happen by them visiting the groups of channelers uh, and groups of um, uh, people who invite them basically one by one um, more like secretly and um, talking to people I think that's a great plan uh, that's a plan for example uh, the thing is they don't want to invade the non-believer, uh, but the invasion will happen. Uh, the, the first physical contact will happen, and it already has been made. But uh, I, I, I didn't ask them where or why or something. But the idea is that if you and me know that they exist, and if you and me have an, any experience with, so to speak, uh, meditation or channeling. Uh, this makes this physical contact more real to happen because uh, uh, because the energy from them uh, you in simple words you will not get crazy because you have a mental energetical and a physical background of it so basically it will not be shocking for you uh, but for like our grandmothers or uh, people normal people if they all suddenly see a huge saucer lying down on the center of park they will get crazy uh, it's like invasion or something outrageous, and uh, not even in the mental mind, but in a, energetically, the human will feel a huge shock, and this can lead to un, uh, unbalanced energies or unbalanced uh, uh, unbalanced decisions. You know, like huge stress, people get mad, get crazy. Uh, so the, they said that basically you need to get ready or be ready mentally, energetically, physically. You can do this through the practices. Also, you can say channeling, uh, get into a, a telepathic contact with them, and they will come to a contact. If somebody asks for it, it, it doesn't have to be like ego-based idea because uh, they're looking at the beginning or mostly the people who are non-ego-based. And... Uh, and then they come down physically, maybe at first time not like come down on earth and talk to you, but make a siding contact, which is basically, uh, you cannot mix it uh, with uh, like a falling star or like a uh -huh. clouds in the sky. Mm -hmm. uh, they said that they come in a perfect formation, that basically the the thing you can recognize them in clear sky if you see uh, something like stars in a uh, in a perfect formation, I mean, like, like a, maybe a triangle, maybe like a, a, a square. Uh, for example, it moves or comes closer to you, and it, it, it keeps its perfect formation. They know that's them. And that's how you can recognize them. Um, and maybe also that many races cannot reproduce a perfect formation. Also, so it's maybe a signature for them, and also that their ships shine. Even in daylight, you can see a shining dot in the sky. And the uh, contact purpose, uh, as such, as I described right now, just to spread the message. So basically, you get some pictures, you get some evidences, you get some messages, you start talking with them, with your friends, with your you know YouTube channels or something. Uh, and more and more people start, hey, actually, we're truly not alone. And you said the loving message is basically, we are not alone as humans. And people, energetical field starts to change uh, to uh, match their energy field, uh, and therefore it will not be uh, uh, a crime against the free will. Uh, uh, but right. like that, 
Yeah, but they said that uh, they and it's been allowed to like invade or engage if uh, if a critical point happens. So basically, what, there's also a possibility yes. that if something goes wrong, uh, sorry, we just uh, plan to like stop your rockets, your tanks, your uh, you know military stuff. We just plan to stop them and disable them. And okay, let's start uh, to talk with you in person. And uh, they say they gave the message the images when they come down here basically they look like humans uh well maybe we are like uh, one little humans to them you know hair the curved or something they are really nice looking like like something like models like you know uh, clean skin mm -hmm. also from uh from bacteria or something like you, you just look at them as fresh completely fresh and they will feel instantly huge love huge love when you get a first sighting even with their ship or you get the first sighting with them physically and uh, their ships are saucer shaped ships shiny saucer shaped ships uh -huh. and you'll feel a huge love if you if you get to the first contact and uh, you will have no questions you will instantly know that uh, they are here to uh, to serve a, uh, you know, the mission which is unite the human races, stop humans from being enslaved, and maybe the enslavement or the slavery of humans is not a big crime or not a crime at all if humans choose to be slaves, but they said that they will not allow human genetics to be manipulated so badly that uh, causes them to to like become human distinct and what I understood is that uh, and I would not love to sp speak with this publicly but there are humans that being uh, sexually used mm -hmm. uh, from other races manipulated that there are being other souls from other other races that are born to do this uh, you know this uh, this you know whatever bad bad stuff and this is a crime also make fun of other people's other people like you know if I if I make fun of somebody and make him feel sad uh, you can do it if it's your original feeling but as I understood that they there are many other races that uh, make fun of that thing that other people are sad and even they said they said that if human shoots human uh, many people many other races find excitement and fun to do it basically it's uh, it's like uh, the the earth is like an ex a, like an entertainment field uh, for many other unpleasant, unharmonious races, and also mm -hmm. they said that human energet earth energetical uh, informational energetical field is not protected. It means mm -hmm. that all kind of uh, cosmic radiance affects us, and the uh, energetical field is completely not protected. And uh, mm -hmm. what I saw is that also the firstly, for example. Mars becomes active, uh, Jupiter, Saturn, whatever the astrology stars that they are, uh, they create some cosmic radiance also, and it affects humans mm -hmm. some way, like a full moon or something, it affects also us. Uh, this is also, according to that, they understood this, is, yeah, this is cosmic radiance, but basically it's not that bad, but there are like other races that manipulate this uh, cosmic radiance uh, to, for their own purposes, uh, tasks, uh, whatever they have have or wish to do uh, against or for humans uh, so basically also the first technology that I will share will be uh, this energy field shield or something which basically to me looked like a huge satellite antenna that creates some kind of a energy field that uh, prevents cosmic radiance and also this instantly helps to increase human life aging uh, and uh, as I said, this makes human clean uh, and human pure as human is without any uh, energy which is not originated from you. So basically, if, if all radiance and all uh, this cosmic radiance is informational and energetical fields, it has like a clean thoughts, clean thoughts, and uh, all, all kinds of this. So basically, uh, this will be something completely different from what we have ever experienced. This will be 
uh, they said in uh, they said something in analogy that basically uh, if you want to achieve a goal in your life you know I want to uh, build a house for example mm -hmm. if you are clean you just take the materials you think all over and you build a house uh, but from the cosmic effects of the radiance uh, you always have difficulties you always have like a noise at the background that bothers you from uh, going successfully in the choice you used to do so it's basically a background noise that can be emotionally that can be in your feelings and maybe cause you fears at one point maybe at one point like uh, this noise is preventing you from uh, like mm -hmm. Your life as you as you truly wish to live, and also what I understood, in many cases this is the case of relationships. Also, that, uh, mm -hmm. for example, the idea if you all of a sudden feel fears, and there is a cosmic irradiance of fears, your fears will be strongly amplifying, amplifying. Not like oh I have fears, okay they're gone, but you will feel them really strongly, and this will cause you stress and like go in a different direction. And the same is with anger, uh, doubts, uh, stress, uh, aggressiveness, and, and so on and so on. So basically, the like, energy are like being uh, uh, outbalanced, you would say, from the cosmic radiance. Right. And uh, about the genetics, so I can share the images or the information that was coming is like basically to prevent humans from having a tail, uh, different skin, different color. Uh, you know, all sorts of genetic genetical manipulations, uh, which basically can happen also if a different soul, uh, for example, some kind of a, I don't know, snake being or something, dinosaur being is born, his soul is being born, that uh, maybe in, uh, in age or maybe through, uh, you know, he has children then and their children, the genetics start to change uh, really, uh, strongly to a different direction, non-human direction, but basically to prevent this also. Uh, so what else was there? And they shared some victims of their world also, but uh, I think overall this is, this is many basic in, uh, the main information. The last thing I missed, it wasn't, uh, there was interference. So they shared something about their world? Uh, yeah, they shared uh, well, some information. I posted also on the video uh, some technology. Uh -huh. The question that I asked. Uh, and so they shared some of this information also. And this was also surprising me, for me because if I have asked uh, some questions for other beings which I channel and they like many times ask what do you need is what you need is but uh, what I felt at that point why did they shared me this information was that uh, to make me more trust in this information that is coming mm -hmm. uh, yes. mm -hmm. uh, and to be a little bit detailed also like to be like okay I received some crazy message but uh, also give um, like to me to like okay uh, this is something that I can like okay yeah so I started to like look into their message more seriously and uh, yeah so they also shared that stuff what's the, what's the name of the Alliance uh, they just said human galactic Alliance uh, uh, they didn't didn't give exact name but the idea was that it's alliance with uh, uh, with human races uh, and there, this alliance with also uh, from other densities. Uh, they said uh -huh. that they were, uh, I, I don't remember the name, the exact numbers, but there were 40 families in their alliance, of which uh -huh. 13 of them are human kinds. So basically, mm -hmm. the other 27 are human with human genetics that are willing to work. And what I also understood, for example, if you channel uh, something or some being, there is a big chance that this being is also from their alliance. And this involves also the Enrico, the, uh, the 
uh, I believe also it would be the 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 what Daryl channels the Bashar civilization. Uh, they said that the uh, they call the civilization sunnies, uh, meaning that they have the golden light like sun. Uh, they said that in their alliance, the Sunnis alliance, there are seven other races, and they vary from their jobs to to their uh, you know, uh, how they look and appear, and they also cooperate. Uh, so we, we, what? Which which civilization are you talking about? Who are the Sunnis? Uh, they said that there are seven civilizations that they refer to the Sunnis. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's a word uh, like sun and sunny. Right. So and who said that? Is it Jessica's? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She said, well, I asked the short continuous questions, and she just said that uh, there's uh, the sunnies have alliance of seven civilizations. Uh, but I understood that they cooperate with not all of the seven, but to like uh, two or three of the sunny civilizations, and they work with them in terms of communication, that the sunny civilizations, the golden yellow like uh, light, uh, they have the stardust, as they said, and the stardust uh, spreads uh, to many stars, uh, many galaxies, also on Earth right now, the stardust, and the stardust helps humans to, uh, not humans, beings also, to become more calm conscious, awaken, mm -hmm. and also they start to have this telepathical communication ability uh, by the effect of the stardust. Mm -hmm. uh, so basically, what I understood is also that this stardust is affecting us right here to become more uh, channeling able, and therefore we start to do channeling, and at one point they can, if it's necessary, to take over the channeling uh, so that they can communicate. So basically they use the sunny civilizations to, like uh, uh, as a messengers or as the spreaders uh, around the cosmos to seek for other human-like life forms uh, to like merge them into the human family. And what I understood is why it and how did they actually came across to uh, to their galactic alliance that they made uh, starts mm -hmm. as they said many thousands of years ago, like many many thousands. I think I ask for the number but i understood it's really even while we haven't been here on earth as humans and they say that uh they had and received a threat of being distinct uh, extinct uh, human mm -hmm. race was nearly about to extinct uh, from the cosmos mm -hmm. and then they asked help for from the higher density beings uh, which mm -hmm. we talked about the white light beings mm -hmm from those densities, and they gave the energetical support. Uh, and this energetical white light support uh, created the informational energetical field, uh, like defense, or uh, how do you say, protection? Mm -hmm. but it's not protection, it means the cosmic energy radiance from other places of the universe do, don't affect them anymore. And they become clean in their energy and clean as humans, and they're like none other civilization can or race can affect them or come closer to them. It's like a energy shielding, and uh, therefore uh, nobody can like without their will can access this this the, their world. So it's basically so what, you uh, wait. You can imagine this as a radio station now that. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, as the Enrico said, all energies that resonate the same exist in the same time and space. So basically, they they create this energy shielding, so uh, non other physical beings, non physical beings can exist in this energy, other than to be in the same energy themselves. So basically, it's uh, some kind of uh, if, if you like, you, you know, the television, for example, you or the radio. Uh, uh, tune in a particular frequency, and you can then communicate in the same way. Uh, all energy that resonates, that vibrates in a certain uh, frequency, or the same or close frequency, can manipulate with each other. So basically, they have this energy protection, so nobody can energetically manipulate them. Uh, and then the alliance was made, and instantly 
all missions, all our goals was to prevent the human race from being And then they started their mission. And they started the aliens and bringing the brothers and sisters back together throughout all the cosmos. Uh huh. So Sunnis are the initial uh, seven races, and they created the Human Galactic Alliance. No, the Human Galactic Alliance was created from uh, humans that abandoned Earth many thousand years ago. Uh, mm -hmm. They went to the star system they call Pleiades. Uh, mm -hmm. They settled down there. They prayed, mm -hmm. asked for help from the beings, uh, from the humans, brothers and sisters from higher densities, density of the white light, pure beings that mm -hmm. uh, that at the beginning understood they didn't want to like help in this matter and, and they will not uh, even participate because they're, tr they're truly pure, the white beings, truly pure. Mm -hmm. They like uh, uh, your soul plays, you don't have any intention or goal or wish, you're, mm -hmm. you're true yourself. But they choose to help them because they saw that human race is about to be extinct mm -hmm. and then they gave them all the support they needed uh, mm -hmm. basically when I stood the informational field uh, informational field what, what is the name I said the informational energetical field uh, shielding uh, mm -hmm. from other cosmic radiants uh, meaning that they can truly evolve without anyone interfering in their informational energetical field and then they started to expand, expand, expand. And as they said uh, later on, they managed to create this defensive shield, uh, energetical field uh, themselves uh, through, with technology. Yes. Uh, so what's the, what, what is the relationship between Human Galactic Alliance and Sanis? How are they uh, related? Uh, yeah, I, 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 I I shared the story like uh, to you, but uh, the uh, uh, to me repeat this message was that uh, the Sunnis, uh, the Sunni Alliance, uh, they are uh, all alliance that exist in the golden yellow light energy. It's a completely different density, uh, and as I understood, they exist really far away from the universe, depending on the uh, civilization from the the that density energy. Uh, but they use them for communication and finding other uh, human life forms. Uh, and because uh, they can communicate with many other densities because they have this stardust energy and yellow like energy that helps exploiting and seeking the uh, cosmos overall. And they use them uh, to like ask like, hey, where are there other human races? And they like help to seek and search for them. So basically they're like, using them as contactees to uh, also Enrico to uh, bring the and find the other planets other human life forms and unite them and bring them back together so so sunnies are not part of the human galactic alliance right N not oh, yeah. all sunnies not all sunnies but uh, they are part they are part they are oh. and work together uh, but mm -hmm. they have, uh, they're not like closely together, but they are together. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Not all of the Sunny alliances, a uh, couple of them. I didn't ask how many are with them working tightly, but uh, they said that there are three civilizations, which basically are human civilizations uh, that work tightly, intense on Earth, mm -hmm. and there are 13 others including the Sunnis that work together and there are mm -hmm. 27 others uh, that far farther families and farther away uh, which I said can, can can help you just to bring and rise your consciousness to you and every individual individuality here on earth do you know Respect what's the relationship between uh, the Galactic Federation of Light and Human Galactic Alliance uh, I don't know. I, I uh, human. Well, but wait. A human galactic uh, of of light. Uh, there is a well-known galactic federation of light, or yeah, galactic well, me, federation. It's uh, well, to me, it sounds really uh, something really similar because uh, the the Jessica, which I was channel channeling, there was that they shine light also. Not all of their uh, humans, but they have a. 
uh, that they bring the light. They have this white light. Mm -hmm. So basically, uh, if you ask me what are the similarities, I would basically say it's uh, just the name of interpreting the alliance. Uh, if it's a human galactic, human federation of light or human uh, alliance, I would say it's the same uh, to, to me. Wait, I need to go to, I'll, I'll be back in 10 seconds. All right. I'll take water. All right. Uh, so, to me, uh, channeling is many times about interpreting energies, interpreting feelings. So basically, uh -huh. if, if somebody has given the name uh, Human Alliance or Human Galactic Federation of Light, I would say many times this is just uh, an interpretation. And uh, I have not seen uh, many channelers that can uh, clear audience or uh, clear visioners that, that can pick out uh, certain numbers, certain names, uh, uh, or certain places on the map. Uh, many times it happens through feelings. So basically, if you ask me uh, through this interpretation, I would say they are the same, but uh, through, uh, through, uh, through the names, I would say it's a matter of interpretation through the channel. All right. Can you move a little bit farther from the uh, camera and move it a little down? Because people came and you're mouth now is shaded by the block by the um, icons on the screen just move it a little down the camera so your your head touches I, the top I'll of the, down. It will, the computer will fall down maybe something like this yeah that's good now no no not good like yeah, this that's for, yeah i need your face up on the screen and uh, somehow <laughs> well i can see uh, that's, that's great that's 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 nice thank you all right, so um, I have guests now. It's Valerie um, and, and Brian. Hey, guys. I have Matt with me from uh, Latvia, and uh, he's, you know him. He's a channeler. And uh, he just uh, described again the, the message he got from, uh, uh, from Jessica. And I will uh, bring up a, a screen. Which you can find it. Hold on. Here. That screen. Maybe. Yeah. Can you see it? I think you should be able. Can you see this now? Yes. Well, I see it. So you can read sign up to go at gmail.com, right? Yes. Can you see my screen? Yes, I can. All right. So basically, uh, that's an email which I created, and my uh, alien friends are reading it. It's a, G a Gmail mailbox. Uh, it's sign up to go at gmail.com, and you can send a message to them. So now a new uh, alliance is is uh, is inviting the uh, volunteers, and you can apply there. You can send um, a message. I volunteer to help Human Galactic Alliance, and you can also explain why. And uh, to see a longer version of this message, you can go to, you see on the top there is a red arrow, Matt and Enrique Channeling on YouTube. So search for Matt and Enrique Channeling, and uh, you can also search for message from Pleiadians, Jessica, important view for, and, um, and listen to more of that message. Now we are unsure whether this is the same alliance as Galactic Federation of Light or a different one. I, my, my guess is it's a different one. Uh, they may overlap, but uh, the agenda sound a little different. 
because the Galactic Federation of Light never, it's, it's abbreviated GFL, never uh, mentioned that they are focused on humans only. They are, I think, are multi-race and they not only protecting humans. And this Human Galactic Alliance is clearly is um, uniting humans in the universe and protecting humans from uh, genetic destruction. I my take on it is we, we need more information. Basically, on one hand, we want to join with many other races, not necessarily human. On the other hand, you know, we don't know if, um, if you know, what are the dangers of diluting ourselves. I got that message. Somebody passed me, me a message before, about half a year ago, and it was a message. I think it was from Andromeda, and it was a very short message, but it was. Uh, beware of the danger of uh, genetic dilution, if it is translated to common language. It was more like uh, scientifically formulated, but it's, it's uh, in common language it's called genetic dilution. Beware of the danger of genetic dilution. Basically, as I understand, there is a field, informational field, which is resonating with our DNA, and if our DNA is diluted with, say, with a lot of other races, that field is destroyed as well. And that's uh, that's a danger. So we need to understand what is needed. Basically, we need to understand the science. And we need to take, basically, responsibility for our own energetic field and for our own genetics. So we understand uh, what we can gain from infusions of alien DNA and what we can lose from infusions of alien DNA. Say, are Lyrans that different, or are Lyrans, uh, uh, Lyrans, Yael, and Pleiadians, they seem to be humans, so they call themselves humans, so maybe crossing with Lyrans, Pleiadians, and Yael is okay, but, you know, crossing with insectoids and farther spaced, uh, placed uh, genetics could be dangerous. So, so basically we need to understand that science, and uh, we need help from that. We need help in that. So that's why I invite everybody to volunteer and basically meet these new helpers. And they propose that they will come. They will come to the groups of humans and and speak to them directly, physically or holographically. Come and meet us down here. And that was uh, an exciting pa part of the next st stage of the contact. In uh, uh, Stephen Greer is is one of the leading the leading figure in CE5 Close Encounters Five Way of Contact, where people come together, meditate, invite aliens, and and uh, you know the presences come. They they come in all different forms as orbs, figures, uh, holographic figures, uh, UFOs, and so on, and as vibrations. So so I think that's a great development and. Um, I welcome this new development. It is exciting that we get a direct invitation, direct message from them, and um, they want to help us. So that's basically the story. And uh, you're welcome to join the discussion. Uh, you mean uh, my opinions about the topics you discussed? Uh, I invite you and Valerie and Brian and Grant to discuss the topic. Yes. Well, I have no, uh, I have no point of view of that, um, mm -hmm. <laughs> or I can judge anything of that. Uh, so I, I don't know. I, I, I just, uh, I don't know. Whatever the channel. I'm is. just a messenger, right? <laughs> I'm just a messenger. Right, so the question is, uh, we know of several uh, alliances, they overlap. Uh, one alliance is Galactic Federation of Light. It's pretty big, um, and it is a group of individuals. It's not races, it's individuals. And uh, they have been channeling for a long time. And uh, they involve Pleiadians and many others. Uh, so there's a group, it's a club. It's a of individuals. Uh, there is also Gurk Fitnir. Uh, Gurk Fitnir is an alliance of uh, 
I think it's five races or six races right now. And uh, the starting ones are Turians, Yael, Pleiadians, um, Lyrans, and Lashunda, Lashunda Reptilians, friendly Lashunda Reptilians. And Fendorians, I think, also is jo are joining. So that alliance kind of is related to, uh, to Galactic Federation of Light, GFL and Gurkfitnir are related, but they're not not the same. They're not the same. They have different structure, different, um, just different people, different ships. Some of their people kind of work, uh, crisscross and work together, but these are different things. And uh, the Gurkfitnir is governed by uh, Arcturians. Arcturians are uh, spiritual and practical leaders in that alliance. There is another alliance which is Ashtar Command, and uh, it is le led by the person called Ashtar, and it's more like military. And that's basically all I know about them. But they are nice well, and also. Cool. What was the name? Military? Can you write it down? Because I think this yes. is the next book also. Was, was, there was the Pleiades, there was Andromed, and there was this Meta, Meta, and I could not pronounce this word. Maybe can you write it down? Yes. Oh, can you see my screen? Yeah. I will write down. Hold on. Like I was looking for Mediterry, Mediterra, and, and I didn't find anything on Google of it. So I was like, hmm, what was the name? And I hold on, just a second. So well, GFL on Galactic Duration of Flight. Can you see it? No, or maybe I scroll the screen down. Oh. Can you see it now? Uh, no. <laughs> Can you see it now? No. <laughs> What's happening? Should be able to see. I guess they they are blocking it. I'm my, my computer yeah. is working. No, just uh, zoom out the word sheet or or PowerPoint. Ah. Zoom out. Can you see it now? A little more. Hold on. I'll create a new sheet. Okay, control M. Okay. Can you see it now? Yeah. Is it good now? Galactic Federation of Light, but what was the name of Mediterranean you said or something? Just a second. Just a second. Uh Gurk. Uh, and the race is a alliance of uh, Arcturians. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, and Fendor. Okay, can you see it? Yeah, but the Mediterranean, you said the the name. I'm, I'm hold on, hold on, hold on. I'll be there. I'm making it pretty. Just a sec. Is it still good? Yeah. All right, and then there is Ashtar command. Go. Oh, that's about it. Um, yeah, but you said the name Mediterranean or something. I think I that's, think he's that's referring to the military alliance. Oh, military alliance, military in the middle of the uh, second from last line, military right here. All right. Military alliance, Star Command, military alliance. They are protecting our uh, solar system and so on. So now we are getting the from Jessica. Uh, Jessica Julia, you said Julia. A human galactic. And they include Pleiadians.
And that's about it. Is it still visible on the screen? Because I can't see the screen when it's, I'm just sharing the screen. Is it good? Well, I see the screen, but... You need to uh, scroll down just a little bit more for the rest of it. Yeah, you end at Ashtar just, command. Just, just a second. Just a sec. I'll do it. Is it good now? Yeah. All right, so that's what we get. So we are talking actively with Girk Fitnir. Other channelers talk actively with J JFL and Ashtar Command. And now we got a new connection to Human Galactic Alliance, which could be overlapping with any of those, most likely with JFL, but could be different. So I, I think it's very exciting. You know, I like their, for their uh, intention to go forward. They're kind of proactive, and I welcome their help, and I want to talk to them. I want to meet them. I want to learn more. Again, uh, my main question, are they including Lyrans and Pleiadians you know, to the, uh, in, into the human, galactic humans? I think they are. So they're not protecting, they're not isolating Earth. They are basically wanting to connect with Earth and reunite with Earth, which is great. I think it's a great forward-going uh, action. Well, uh, I have to say, uh, I'm well, in, in the screen. I see so many concepts, and uh, my mind is not uh, filming this. I can only share the information that was coming. And Absolutely, you are, you are messaging. Right. That's what you're supposed to do. Yes, thank you. Yes. Yeah, but they said that uh, they are in the their alliance. There are forty races, mainly right. humankind. So basically, if any of those are humankind, that they definitely are in the alliance. I uh, didn't ask the names. I didn't ask the names, and also right. in their alliance, there are uh, humankind from higher densities, other density, meaning non-physical beings. Right. All right. Which includes also the Sunnis. Uh, yeah, and, and the, 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 they're cooperating with thirteen. Uh, human races, uh, which basically are any anything that looks like human, uh, like us, taller, mm, uh, shorter, wider, or whatever. I, I received mm -hmm. that basically all of them are higher, are longer. I mean, taller than us. Uh huh. Uh, and uh, also the higher density beings, and also the Sunnis, which basically is something similar to Bashar and, and Rico, but mm -hmm. uh, not all of those, all of them. Just a couple of those sunny races, uh, which basically are, are densities in golden yellow light, and uh, their their alliance, like the human alliance, as, as they said, mm -hmm. they strongly in, in uh, are interacting with three races, three human races, uh, part of which was the Pleiadians, Andromedans, and the third name, I believe, was the Ashtar, the Ashtar command, as, as I understood. But they said they are the police. They said uh, a couple of times police. So basically, I, I don't know how the Ashtar looks, but uh, they gave me pictures of golden hair. They have a military background also, but they they don't use the you know the military background. They just use it as a you know like invade uh, with uh, uh, against the uh, certain crimes that are not uh, harmonious uh, to humankind. Like you know, like basically, they have their uh, not political, but police kind of a system that they they look after. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't know what Arcturians, I, I don't know what's Yael's. Uh, Yael's are tall grays. Yael are tall grays. Hey, Max. Uh, okay, yeah. hey, Max. Hmm? Oh, grays, whatever. Uh, yep. That doesn't make sense. I. I, 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 you know, there are many information out there on the internet. Uh, I'm not the kind of guy who reads all this stuff, mm -hmm. uh, so I, I don't have the knowledge background to like interpret what's basically La Shunda. I don't know it also. So basically, all I share is from my own experience. So, so. Uh, the Ashtar Command is more like a guardian race, a guardian alliance, actually. Yeah, yeah. It's more like a guardianship. That's all. Oh, well, it's okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 
Well, anyway, here in Latvia, I, I, <laughs> I'm looking forward to, like, uh, I, I already, I haven't arranged the date, but I'm, I'm willing to do this uh, repeated channeling, you'd say. Uh, but I, I'm not sure yet uh, the topic or the questions or the intention to it, but uh, I think after that I will have more to share. Well, I think what you channeled already was pretty great. The, the fact that they want us to help and they want to connect with us and want us to help ourselves and each other is a pretty remarkable thing. Well, yeah, the, the many times in this channel, uh, channeling state, uh, there's like really loving feelings, uh, like uh, you know, tears start to come and uh, and so on and so on. But I, because they have this uh, background of the white loving energy that they receive from the higher densities, and as they said, we they look at us as fourth density. The she, the Jessica, her density is like a fifth density. Uh, and the sixth density is something out of this universe. It's like a higher density, including also the sunnies and the, the angel white light loving beings. But the angels without wings uh, have not channeled any type of angels, uh, maybe like one or two times only. Uh, and then, 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 then. then. Uh, I forgot what I wanted to say. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you much. Guys, any more questions, comments yeah, yeah. so far? I remember, I just wrote down yeah. the letter and posted on YouTube. Uh, maybe you will find more right. details on it because it's a, a, an hour and a half a long message. Uh, you can read yes, it. Yes, thank there. you. Uh, yeah, everybody, I, I gave the link to that message, gave the how to find it. Uh, it's Matt and Enrico uh, YouTube channel. Um, if you ever, if you could, uh, Matt, if you could uh, type it in English as a text, that would be nice. You know, we'll try to uh, analyze it more, but it would be nice to get a channeling session and talk directly to them. That would be, I guess, our next step. It would be nice to have another session where you could channel uh, yeah, we can, uh, we can uh, try that and uh, see that. And basically, I, I don't think it's something like uh, Enrico, who you can channel anytime, but she's mm -hmm. like looking whether this is just not uh, ego based uh, and the message would be understood or something. Or this is a longer uh, thing because. Uh, I asked uh, to the cha in the channeling, uh, uh, for example, they gave me the feeling and the picture with my friends to whom they would love to cooperate uh, or would love to like, yes. closer to them. And they said that one of them, he would be up service to like share this message, but only he has this ego base background, meaning that the message would be and he would love to be like uh, something important and he would like you know shine his ego out uh, but I want to talk with the other friend who said uh, that they are looking because they feel or they know that that friend can uh, get uh, strongly in this uh, mission whatever uh, to you know for humankind and it, in real, in it evolves, involves many uh, many in many directions, mainly in just uh, making the humans here on Earth know that they exist and know the crimes that are against humans, uh, and and uh, just in, in in simple words, just to uh, change the information to a more positive way for uh, for uh, you know unification of this galactic family. Yeah, we, we only can invite them, and if they come, if they come, if they don't come, you know, uh, we'll, we, we can wait until uh, until they come, right? We can't do too much. Um, so, our intention so is to... About your, excuse me. When we're talking about your um, site there and going there and asking to be, um, we're asking to be a part of, 
of this change on Earth. Is that correct? And uh, maybe asking for different jobs, which we can do to help that? There are uh, two different... Uh, yes, go ahead. Uh, you asked... Uh, uh, can you repeat the question? Because there was a background noise, something. Sure. What, um, when, when you ask for us to go to your site and sign up to be a part of this, can you um, explain better, maybe, what that all entails? Uh, I, I didn't ask for somebody to come to my it, site. <laughs> it was me. It oh. was me who was doing Yeah, Matt did. Or, um, excuse me, Max did. Mm -hmm. So what does uh, that entail, then, Max? Uh, yeah, uh, so there are two different actions. One is we are inviting uh, Matt and inviting Jessica to speak to us in one of the next sessions to just to channel to us, and we could speak directly. That's invitation for them to come through channeling. And the second uh, action is a individuals can now write to uh, Jessica uh, using the email, which is sign up to go at gmail.com, and they can uh, uh, just apply and volunteer to work with this with this new alliance, whatever it means. And okay. then I would expect that this alliance would contact them one one way or another, most likely through telepathy and. Uh, dreams and messages. I can share another info that they yeah. choose. They choose to they to whom they will cooperate. And okay. That, that they will choose, and they choose it really tightly, and they choose it uh, uh, well under certain points of. Uh, Based on frequency, that vibration, uh, those uh, kinds of things. Yeah, and many aspects from many aspects. Uh, so okay. basically, what I do is from them that they uh, choose the humans carefully, not to like, uh, uh, not to like being this message misunderstood, uh, created as a cult. Uh, for example, if somebody spreads this message and then asks for money, and then many people will just oh like just another way of making money or something. That this information is also being mis uh, misunderstood uh, or misguided in some way. I, I don't know how to best explain it in English. So basically, they they're looking for something that can uh, serve the purpose of that information uh, to like change the vibration. In other words, if you you see if somebody is making money or uh, or like uh, creating a new religion with this information uh, that this also changes the informational field to a completely different direction. So it's basically, uh, 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 how do you say, a uh, mixture of aspects with whom they wish to cooperate or something. OK, so you go to a human colony and then write the message down. Is that correct? Oh, uh, this email here, um, I'll, I'll make it a red email. You just can email it from your computer. You don't have to go to human colony. But on human colony, there is a, a form which you can just apply on, on the site. So that's another option. OK. And you know, they, I'm sure the aliens have the technology to read it. And I'm sure they're listening, because they have been blocking me a couple times during the webinar when I did something which they thought is inappropriate. So so uh, I'm sure we have been listened. So they know where to go and where to read the messages. OK. Thank you very much, you That guys. is just a way for them to help help them to get uh, volunteer. Because I'm, I'm sure intention is important, and being volunteer is important. It's an action which is very specific. If you volunteer, they uh, uh, that is a nice impulse of energy which they will receive. Thank you. Okay, so it's midnight here. <laughs> Anything else? I think we are done uh, for now. Uh, I also am, am doing channeling classes, so that would be another area where we would uh, be interested in uh, learning more from you. So if you could teach us uh, your uh, uh, your uh, your uh, art of channeling. How do how how do you teach channeling? How to channel? That would be wonderful. Okay. 
that would be a very interesting topic also to discuss. Uh, we, you have my Skype, right? And yes, uh, absolutely. Thank you. Yes. We can then talk about this. Yes, absolutely. Thank you very much. What time is now there? Midnight. Oh. Thank you very much for your time and patience. We appreciate it so much. Yeah, well, enjoy. <laughs> well, as I said, in, as I said in the beginning, uh, my memory resources or mind resources uh, are receiving their limits. Uh -huh. uh, I have all the information which I can remember, and I'm getting even less and less. I wish to visit Riga. I love Riga. It's my favorite uh, city in the world. Most favorite. Everywhere favorite. <laughs> my uh, my ancestors live in, in um, Rezekne. I know. Uh -huh. I visited Rezekne some time ago, maybe 25 years ago. It was a happy time. All right. So um, thank you, Matt, very much. And thank you, all participants. And I think it was an important message to sh to discuss and share. And uh, let's continue that uh, conversation um, uh, in our next webinars, future webinars. Namaste. Namaste. Okay. Bye. Good night. Good night.